We have just reached one full stack of episodes. Hermitcraft Season 7 has been pretty ridiculous so far. I'm incredibly proud of what we've managed to achieve in that amount of time. I mean, we've got the Industrial District, we've got my ridiculous base, we've got Pacific, we've got all of the stores and all of the other bits and pieces that we've done throughout the season. We've got the Villager District. I mean, there's, there's been tons. I mean, can you believe that the button was this season? I was thinking about that the other day, like that feels like it was in the last season, but that, that was this season and Hermit Challenges, that all started this season, but it seems like so long ago. And I think it's genuinely because so much has happened in a short space of time. And today we're going to be working on one of those things that has happened. Prepare yourselves for a slideshow because we're going into the shopping district. As I'm sure many of you know, the Great Hermitcraft Turf War has turned into a mini game battle. So we're going to be battling things out through mini games. That's how we're going to be deciding this thing and there's a few of them popping up and this one right here which is constructed by Good Times with Scar is incredibly incredibly impressive looking. Now it's going to kind of be like a capture the flag type game where we have to capture each other's source blocks and bring it back into each other's little cave at the back here and Scar has tasked me with doing all of the redstone bits so he wants me to do all of the defenses, the piston doors, the activation systems, the offenses, the ways of attacking people using redstone. It's going to be interesting. It's kind of like a dream job in terms of redstone builds. And I get to kill and hurt people with machines for fun. And nobody will be mad at me because it's a game. Normally when I kill and hurt people with machines, people are upset. So first things first, building up the piston doors. And I know I've been doing a lot of talking about vaults during this mycelium resistance stuff, you know, and you would expect me to build vaults at either end. And you would be correct. That is exactly what I plan on doing. Now I've built a lot of these things in my time, so I'm not going to spend too long focusing on how the mechanics and things work. So I'm just going to do it in a series of very quick cuts. Block, 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 block. Wrong block. Block, 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 and done. I hope. I guess there's only one way to find out. Yes, that looked good. And that all looked good as well. I absolutely love these things. I, don't, I mean, I don't even need to say that. You know that I love these things, but I feel like it needs to be said every single time I activate it that I love these things. But of course, we need more than one piston vault door. We need another one on the other side. So that should now all be done as well. That is... Wow, that is two for two. I've built these things without any mistakes twice now. However, on the input front, this is a little bit pants, isn't it? We can't just have a lever that's on a block above the door. That doesn't feel very mini-gamey. That doesn't feel very... It doesn't feel very interesting. So instead, I've been speaking with Scar, and he suggested kind of like a nuclear launch style opening for the piston door, which may sound a little bit strange, but for anyone who's not familiar with launching nuclear weapons, it's not a one-man job, okay? You can't just walk in there and press a big red button and fire everything off, okay? You have to have two people on opposite sides of the room press a button at the same time to actually launch the nukes, okay? And we want to do that with the piston door. So two people from this team, for example, have to make their way over to the piston door and they have to coordinate a button press at exactly the same time for this piston door to open. Which sounds like it would be complicated, but it really isn't. So obviously it all starts with the two buttons and then I just have to connect those two buttons up into an AND gate. So both button number one and button number two, AND being the operative word there, have to be pressed for this redstone torch to turn on. And then we're going to connect that redstone torch into a pulse extender, which is then going to run it into our piston door. So the door will stay open for a certain amount of time, allowing the two people to get inside, and then it will close up behind them. The issue is, I can't test this on my own because sadly, I am not two people. Hey, Ren, can you help me press a button? I mean, I... <laughs> It's a very, very strange request, but he seems, he seems interested. Oh, here, here he comes. He looks very graceful flying in like that. We need to press these at the same time. Three, two, one, press. It worked. It, 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 it kind of worked. It kind of didn't. I appreciate your service, Ren, even if my redstone completely failed. The issue is the pulse that came in was way too short for our pulse extender because we both pressed the buttons at such different times. Our AND gate only activated very, very briefly and it created a weird redstone clock. So instead, we now have a pulse extender which will then activate our pulse extender, which will then open our door. And I also have a much more scientific way of testing it. So this is essentially the worst case scenario. The buttons have been pressed pretty out of sync here, but they should be just in sync enough to still open up the piston door. And it has. And this is how long the door stays open for. 
Now it's closed. I would say that's pretty perfect. Let's get everything built up on the other side, which I have now done and everything seems to be working nicely. So that is one incredibly important element of this mini game all constructed. But there is still a ton and I mean a ton of work left to do. Out of pure curiosity here, what happens? TNT inside of a slab inside water though with carpet on top. It doesn't blow things up. It does not blow things up. But I'm, I'm not in peaceful mode. That is causing zero destruction, and that's that's very, very cool. I mean, I guess I should probably do a quick control test to make sure that my redstone testing world doesn't have something weird going on. Yeah, no, TNT still works here. We are in business. Concealed, sort of concealed, landmines. Both sides are now fully mapped out, looking a little bit like a Swiss cheese, and you may also notice that there's a few other bits of planning that have been chunked into the mix that I'm not going to be building just yet, but obviously they are going to be an important element. So the first thing with these landmines is actually mapping out under the ground where each one is going to go, and now I have to work out how I'm going to wire them up, which seems like it will be simple, but the issue is all of these landmines have to go off at exactly the same time, otherwise everything explodes and things get destroyed. Yeah, I probably should clarify, everything exploding is good. We want everything to explode, what we don't want to happen is everything getting destroyed. We want zero destruction from this design. Otherwise, I think Scar might be a little bit upset with me. I thought it was probably wise to test this before we get the TNT in, so I've put redstone torches on the ends of all of the blocks, and they should all turn on and turn off at exactly the same time. I'm gonna have to watch this video a bunch of times to make sure that that is correct. But first impressions are, it looks pretty good. I hate crafting dispensers with a passion. I would pay someone real life money to craft my dispensers for me. Color coordinated carpets are going in place. And that should be everything done for this side of the TNT explosions. We're going to get onto this side in a little bit. But before we do that, I want to work out the barricade defense system. So the idea is, is that inside this area over here, there's going to be two buttons for each team. So we've got one button, which is like the offense button. This is what you want to do when you want to attack people who are coming into your side so you hit this button that activates all the tnt and also activate something else but then this button is going to activate your defense system so this is when the other team is over here looking to come into your side and you want to put up defenses so you're going to put up barricades and also it's going to shoot out lingering potions that will give players buffs so you can stand behind this barricade get a buff and then attack other players now i'm hoping that these barricade systems should be relatively simple so if i just activate this yeah that's all good and then when it deactivates that is all good Okay, so that is perfect. Now, I have built it the wrong way around. It's actually facing in the wrong way. But if I then just place a dispenser on top of one of these target blocks, this central one here, that can also act as our potion firer. So this should be the entire circuit. Nice and easy. Right, I think there's seven on each side. And with all of them now in place, now it's just a task of actually connecting every single one of them up. Now, thankfully, I don't have to have all of these activate at exactly the same time. And I need to make sure that I don't power parts of this redstone line. Because otherwise, once again, things will explode. And explosions are fantastic when you want explosions, but when you don't want explosions, explosions are a big problem. With that being said, I think we've managed to get through this process semi-explosion free. There was one, and it was not related to my redstone, it was just, it was a creeper going off. Scar might be the only person on the server who is worse at lighting up his build than I am. But now, I'm just trying to work out a little bit of redstone logic. So I want to make it so that these barriers and things pop up for a certain length of time when you press the defense button. And I also want to make it so that the offense button, the attack button, can only be pressed every now and again as well. You know, there needs to be a cooldown timer because otherwise people are going to be setting off TNT left, right and center. And that's going to be a big issue. And I want to make it so that you can't activate defense and attack at the same time. There's only one or the other. That is, yeah, that's, there's a bit of a laundry list of weird redstone problems there. And I'm going to be frank and honest, I'm not 100% certain how I'm actually going to do them just yet. So I think I'm just going to wing it for the time being. And if by wing it, I meant just stare into space for 20 minutes, not knowing what to do. Yeah, that's exactly what I've done. Um... <laughs> and I, I'm no closer. Here comes the obligatory, I've done a lot of Minecraft today. So after staring into space a little while longer, I came up with a bit of an interesting idea, which is to block off the buttons. So when you press one of them, the buttons actually get blocked off. So you can't click on them until obviously these blocks get retracted. Only issue is there is a little bit of a delay before these blocks drop down. So you could quite easily press both. And given that Grian is likely going to be playing in this game, I, I think we need to stop that from happening. And... That's a little bit more like it. Okay, you'd have to do something really special 
to press both buttons there. Right, with everything fully connected up, let's give this thing a quick tester. So hitting this left button, all of our defenses pop up, apart from that one over there, something seems to have gone wrong. And then once the cooldown clicks off, Cool. That tick was exactly what we needed. I haven't filled them with TNT just yet. So with this whole half of the system now fully done and dusted, it's time for us to start work on doing the other half. But first, Ren wants us to test out his new mini game, which should be interesting. Yep, here we go. Okay, <laughs> TNT's ready. It's, it's hopefully not. Stop, stop. <laughs> okay. Okay, so that, wait a minute. That, that did not go to plan. Well, I think it's safe to say that that was successful. <laughs> right, let's crack on with the time lapse then. Hey, you know, it's been a little while since we've done a time lapse. It's been a little while since I've sat down and had a chat with you during one of these things, but I have got a topic of conversation today. And it has been, it's been so, it's been my entertainment for like the past, well, ever since the video released. So uh, for me, last night, but for you guys, two nights ago, I released a video that is just a 10 hour long video where the redstone lamp, I turn on a redstone lamp and then 10 hours later, 90,000 repeaters later, the redstone lamp turns off. <laughs> I, I loved reading through the comments of this because there's some people that thought it was hilarious that I had done this video. Obviously, I kind of made this video as a bit of a joke, you know, I... The idea came to my head and I was like, that'll be daft. That's as daft as it gets. Let's just let's just make it. And I'm gonna I'm gonna sprinkle some Easter eggs throughout it. I'm gonna put C418 wait as being the song. And <laughs> like the comments are so split. There's people being like, why have you done this? What on earth are you doing? Like Mumbo's lost the plot. He's clearly going insane. And there's other people who have loved it. And there's plenty of people who seem to have sat all the way through it. If you sat all the way through that video, Fair play to you. You just have to remember though that at the end of the day, it's all just a little bit of fun. So all that stuff is now finished for both sides. Both sides now have defenses. Both sides now have TNT attackers, or at least they have the mechanisms for TNT attackers. I don't actually have all the resources just yet. One important thing is that both sides have the same number of defenses and the same number of TNT exploder things. And I also really, really tried to make this room look at least somewhat decent. You know, Scott does such a good job of making the entire area beautiful. I mean, look at this. This stuff is gorgeous. Okay, I, I really tried. <laughs> this is the best effort. Let's see what Scar thinks of it. Hello, Mumbo. Hello, that was a very, very elegant entrance right there. That was impressive. Um, I have something for you. It's a present. Okay. <laughs> what, are, what are these? Dude, your redstone down below is a death oh. I killed <laughs> multiple creepers just chilling on your red ropes down there. Yeah, that's a... I was so scared. It is a bit of... It is a bit of a problem. I mean, I must admit, okay, I I have been caught by one of the creepers that has dropped down from your <laughs> unlit areas around here. So I guess we're both as bad Me? as each other. <laughs> I am known for my lighting up builds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Everyone knows this. All right, so I'm going to count us in. All right, and I'll... All right. Should we press on one or do we press on press? What do you reckon? Ooh, um, let's do one. Okay, three, two, one. This, you didn't you didn't go on one. I thought you we I said go let's on go. One. I said let's go on one. So that means you go on when one is. Oh, it's like I three. You said press. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm sorry, okay, sorry. okay. Okay. All right, we'll okay, go ready? one. One. Okay. Yeah. Three, two, one. Dude, okay, oh, well, <laughs> we, we just about, <laughs> we just about squeaked Did it. Oh, there's, there's no button on the other, oh, no. there's no button on the other side, and we need to. Oh, no, it's okay, I made the emergency exit, remember? <laughs> yeah, if you, it's a good thing that you actually made that, because otherwise, I needed to find another person to hit the button to get you out. <laughs> oh, gosh. If we, if we hit the defend button, right? Oh, wow. On this side, okay, you can see mm -hmm. these barricades pop up. So that will stop people from being hit by the firework rockets and things. Then you mm -hmm. can hit the attack button and that will activate all of the the dispensers that are underneath this carpet that currently do nothing, but you can see these little these little water things. Basically yeah. TNT will be dispensed here and it will explode, but it won't destroy anything because it's in water. And oh, that will wow. Yeah, that will that will create like a lot of explosions through here. So that would be quite dangerous. <laughs> oh wow, that is <laughs> I, you just blew my mind. I, I'm just blown away. So that's that going to be really cool. It's going to be it's going to be quite a powerful attack, and I'm hoping to also add a few more attacks in the walls as well that will activate when you hit that attack button. So it will be quite chaotic. Like there will be fire and there will be TNT explosions, 
and then yeah when people are trying to defend there'll be lingering potions and things but i've still got a few bits to do like i need to do the wind detection so we need to detect when when the source blocks get get transferred over i think that's pretty important yeah. and also just like little little details and bits and pieces but no it's been so much fun i've i've been really really enjoying this i've been fully geeking out so it's been it's been <laughs> Dude, super cool you, you <laughs> blow my mind with this this is this is really cool. And I can help get some TNT. There's a shop over there. It has this like industrial pass thing. I and forget. Like, unlimited <laughs> yeah. It's pretty amazing. <laughs> so I will definitely help you get some of those. <laughs> Sweet. Um, yeah. And yeah, I need to work on. Dude, the biggest thing that's missing in my stuff is I need little plants. Like you're working on all this cool redstone. And I'm like, man, what's a mushroom bush look like? I must admit that is a question that I've never had to ask myself in my entire time playing Minecraft. Anyway, mushroom bushes aside, one thing that I need to do is gather up all of the TNT for all of the dispensers because I think there's about 32 dispensers in this design and I want to have one stack of TNT in every single one of the dispensers and there's five stacks of sand for every stack of TNT which means that we need about 100 and 150 stacks. Am I totally off there? I mean, I'm doing this math off the top of my head. <laughs> For, yeah, 150, 150 stacks of sand, that's quite a lot. How many shulker boxes is that? That seems like a lot. Honestly, I'm not sure if I've got enough now that I think about it. So I've actually got 10 shulker boxes worth, which if I actually work that out, there's 27 stacks per shulker box. So we've actually got 270 stacks of sand. I've actually got twice as much as I needed. Right, let's head back over to the minigame because it's time for the all-important test. So just to be safe, I have built it on the mycelium side, so if it blows up, it's just gonna blow up mycelium, and no one's gonna care. Are you ready? Here goes. There it is. So all of the TNT has just been dispensed. And that looked like it worked. <laughs> and that was quite dramatic. And that seems like it's going to be quite dangerous. I kind of want to know how dangerous. I did just ask if anyone was around, but uh, yeah, no, no one was available to get blown up. So I guess that leaves only one option. Bon voyage. What? What? It didn't even hurt me. What? Is it to do with the carpets? I mean, it can't just be to do with the carpets. That doesn't make any sense. Um, I mean, half a heart? What am I made of? Is this a Kevlar Hawaiian shirt? What? Are these lead flip-flops? What is this? Maybe it's the slab. It has to be the slab. But that seems so strange to me. Oh, goodness me, that's bad. Okay. Okay, well, that's... That's... <laughs> yeah, that's a little bit more like it. <laughs> so that was like a direct hit. I was basically inside the TNT. What I'm curious about is if I'm stood, say, here... <laughs> what? That's so broken. What? I may sound a little bit defeated, and it's because I am defeated. Green's here, and I mean, I think... I guess I can test it with him in the TNT. <laughs> I mean, this is going to be interesting, at least. See, why did I get more damage then? I was more damaged then! There's me complaining about two hearts of damage while we see Green just go horizontal on the screen. I mean, he died for a good cause. What? What? That TNT... Well... Well... <laughs> well, 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 well. I think we have found a solution. We've got, we've got a solution right there. I mean, it fired accidentally, but this seems like it could work. And if we can get this under control and actually get the TNT on demand, which we have. So it's pretty lethal. It is pretty lethal. I mean, I was decently far away there. And I, I still took a bit of a brunt. This is definitely the solution. It's not the prettiest solution. I think the other one was a lot more elegant and a lot nicer looking. But sometimes you got to do what you got to do. And you know what? I don't think it actually looks that bad. Now you have to remember, I have the building skills of a bunion. Okay, so that has to be taken into account. But I don't think it's awful. To anyone who doesn't know what a bunion is, I suggest you just Google it. I must admit, I'm not having the best of times here. Things are exploding. And they're actually, they're probably exploding. I have no real explanation for it, other than potentially they're in too close proximity to one another. So I'm going to space things out just a tiny bit. And just for a spot of context, I would say in total, I've spent 12 hours on just the TNT part of this game. So I think you'll understand my disappointment. If this doesn't work, why is that not dispensing TNT? We'll ignore it. As long as nothing gets destroyed. Which... It hasn't. Yes. Now for the mycelium side. Honestly, I think I can die a happy man now. Let's finally start work on the wind detection. So I'm thinking something like this should be absolutely perfect. Obviously made considerably more beautiful. So we... Oh, I heard that. 
I heard that one coming. As I was saying, something like this, but considerably prettier. So this is the grass side. So the grass source block is right there. If they manage to grab the mycelium block, they will then run over and place it on this observer face right here, which will then trigger the win. And the win is just going to be a bunch of fireworks, which I'm just going to fire out from dispensers that are going to be surrounding this area here. Nothing too complicated. With that being said, getting redstone lines into this area without connecting them up to all the other redstone lines that are in this area is a tiny bit of a brain ache. Right, so let's see what happens here then. Block gets removed, activates redstone clock, and that redstone clock is activating all of the blocks that the dispensers are connecting up into. I mean, that looks like... We have got a success. So let's get everything constructed on the other side. And I've got to say, we are really on the home straight now. And that home straight has swiftly turned into a finish line. Because I think, I hope, that should be the final piece of redstone we need to place in this area here. And now Scar's just arrived and he's asked me to shoot him in the face. And do I go right between... <laughs> wow! <laughs> that was spectacular. I don't know how much damage that did. But it looked amazing. <laughs> that is the most satisfying thing in the world. <laughs> Look at the link. What is that? Right into the monocle. Goodness gracious me. <laughs> That's so crazy. <laughs> How much stuff did he have in his... That was... That was an obscene amount of stuff in his inventory. I've just realized I've been tasked with killing a lot of people in today's Hermitcraft episode. So here comes an unofficial victory with no real fireworks, but the system does function. Now I would love to install some actual fireworks at this point in time, but if I just lag on over to the industrial district, all of my gunpowder chests are completely, completely empty. This is partially my fault with all of the TNT that I've been crafting, but also the industrial day passes have been being used quite a bit. So that means that I'm, I'm cleaned out. So I'm going to have to AFK overnight to gather a bunch of stuff. But I think this is just about where we can wrap things up. Scar's game is finished. I'm incredibly happy with the progress that we made. Scar is incredibly happy. I can't wait to see people playing it. It's going to be hilarious. It really is. So look out for that one. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed and I'll catch you in the next video. See ya. And I just want to say at the end of this video, this has been one of the funnest Hermitcraft episodes I've done in a long time. Just in terms of geeking out over silly redstone. It's just, it's such my jam. Like it's... This is exactly the sort of thing that I absolutely love doing in Minecraft. It's just, just nerding out over silly redstone and traps and explosions and everything. It's been the best. I've loved it.